out as soon as we've arrived up here. We have blue skies, light winds, and excitement to go paddling. Excitement? So today we're going to meet with our good friend Nick, Nick Ray, who is kayaking around Scotland, but not in the traditional sense of going from A to B. He's just kayaking for a year, going wherever he wants to go, and he just happens to be in Carrollskew this morning, and we're heading up from Ullapool to go and meet him, and I'm so excited because there is barely a cloud in the sky, there's barely a breath of wind, it's warm, I haven't paddled for a couple of weeks. I've been sat in the, in the van for a couple of days driving, so really excited to get out of the water. at the jetty now, about to get in the water, but a great catch up with Nick. We didn't film any of it because we just wanted to have a nice chat and it was so good to see him, so good to see him. So really excited to get on the water now and uh, have a nice gentle paddle in this extreme breeze. Windy than forecast, um, but we're not going very far. We'll just poodle along until we find a nice camp spot and then hang out there for the evening. Sure. My kind of paddling. Sounds good. Excellent. As Cal and I tried to sit out this fierce little west coast rain shower, it was quite something to watch Nick, totally absorbed and at peace in this environment, just crack on with getting everything he needed, his tent set up, his kayak unpacked. It's pretty amazing seeing someone who's so tuned in that environment and in the present moment of just what he needs right there and then. Cal and I first met Nick two years ago as we paddled around Scotland. 
and I definitely felt here was a guy that felt most at peace when he was in the outdoors, in nature, in that kind of a rhythm. And it was amazing to see him totally immersed in that after nine months into this trip. Nick is someone that doesn't necessarily always see the best in himself, his strengths and what he's achieved. But Cal and I both acknowledged watching him that this guy was was an inspiration to both of us and someone that we both had a huge amount of respect for. I am just collecting some rubbish. I saw this tub lying around and I saw the rope and I thought that rope looks like it should go in that tub. So I'm putting the rope in the tub. The tub already had some stuff in it though. I think it's gone off the side of a boat maybe. So we'll leave this place a bit nicer than... Nicer, that's not the right word. A bit cleaner than when we first got here. Um, you know, there was some stuff actually like under the grass. What's going on there? Oh yeah, so when we put the tent up, I was walking on the, the kind of the grassy bit, which I thought was just boulders and grass, and it was crunching its plastic bottles. Because obviously in the storms, the plastic bottles have been washed up to the top and the grass has grown over them. So I think what actually we can see on the beach in terms of plastic is just the uh, the tip of the iceberg. And there's quite a lot actually buried underneath the grass. Actually embedded into the environment now. Yeah, it's basically, yeah, exactly. It's basically become part of the environment now, plastic. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we'll fill this up and take this away with us. Try and balance it on my paddleboard somehow. Um, actually we saw on the beach around the corner there was a massive fish farm huge pipe. Huge fish farm pipe, yeah. Huge fish farm pipe. Like, we're not going to take that away. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a, it's re it really angers me seeing that because the fish Funny. farms. What, what's that? What's that in the distance? Oh yeah, so these are the fish farms that she right here. So less than a mile away, are the fish farms, and they can take their boats out every day from land to the fish farm, but they can't go the same distance again to this beach to come and pick up their mess. And I mean, okay, so it might not be that exact fish farm's mess, but fine. it's from fish farming. But it's from fish farming, and it's all over the beach on the west coast of Scotland. You'll find fish farm. Um, Debris, big pipes that have washed away in storms, blocks of polystyrene. We've bullshit. seen it so much, haven't we? Absolutely We've seen bullshit. it so much. So, um, like I say, I'm not, I'm not going to be able to move that, but they're boats and stuff. They could easily do that, and they don't. <sighs> but I will pick up what I can, and I will feel glad to have done so. Um, and then, yeah, keep banging the drum. seems really counterintuitive if you want you know, a healthy ocean full of fish to catch. Maybe don't choke or poison them. Mm. Mm. Seems obvious. So we're here having a brew and a packet of Pringles <laughs> with the legendary Nick Ray. <laughs> I think you're legendary. You massively inspire me and James. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so Nick's been kayaking now for, is it nine months? I think so, yeah. Nine months. Set off from Tobermory on the 28th of August, 2022. Paddled all through the winter, camped, paddled all through the winter. Um, we're now in May and you've got another, what is it? Th three, four months? Four months, yeah. Till August, end of mm. August yep. of kayaking. So how's it going? Superb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's just one, one of those life's incredible experiences. Yeah. 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 Every day has been a delight. There, there has been a delight every day. And um, uh, just love exploring the intricacies of the Scottish coastline. Mm -hmm. The purpose really is to, is to be inquisitive. I mean, I am inquisitive by nature and, and just to look into all the little nooks and crannies and, and mm. see what's there really and there's often amazing things to see i mean wildlife or you know like we saw today those um common seals no the the 
Dead Man's Fingers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The dodgy Dead Man's Fingers. Yeah. Yep. And, um, yeah, and then and, and history and old buildings and old piers and just, yeah, just incredible ge mm -hmm. geology as well and um, beautiful beaches and lovely sea arches, big caves, small caves. Mm -hmm. And, of course, along with all that is just being on the sea, you know, just the, mm -hmm. the life-giving ocean really and and feeling very at home on the sea and and yeah just just feeling um very comfortable mm. in my kayak and no matter what the conditions are like I just take it and ride the waves and move with the waves and yeah I just uh just have found my, have found a natural rhythm to life really because you, you said to me earlier that you feel like you're going with nature's rhythm, and I love the idea of that. Mm. And it, it contrasts so heavily to how how I feel like I live my life a lot of the mm. time and how we generally live our lives, mm. which is to just push and push and push. And you were saying to me earlier about how over the winter, you know, you'd be going to bed at six o'clock yeah. and, you know, maybe falling asleep at eight or nine, mm. but then getting up late and mm. just kind of adapting to be doing things with nature. Has yeah. that how has that affected you from a kind of well-being viewpoint rather than the constant pushing that we tend to do? Um, yeah, it, it, it's been really helpful to um, give myself the permission or to totally ad adopt the pace of nature, really. Mm -hmm. And, um, yes, and, you know, like through the winter, I, you know, I would... Uh, be off the water around about 2, 2.30 uh, in my tent straight away and as soon as it got dark I'd probably be falling asleep fairly fairly quickly and having cooked my dinner and and you know not really feeling the need to have a light on um, or read or watch anything um, I'd, I'd fall asleep and then I'd wake up around 5 o'clock in the morning and there'd be the, that delicious period of time when I'd just lie snoozing in my sleeping bag, <laughs> brew myself a couple of, cof cup, couple of mugs of coffee and, and then pack and get on the waters by nine o'clock when, you know, when the light was returning to the day and, and then just paddling for the day and, and maybe covering um, 15 miles on a winter's day and, um, and just going through that process and just finding a natural routine and a natural rhythm and as the the light has returned and the daylight extending you know i noticed that my my energy uh has returned you know is extending as well so i'm mm -hmm. up and out of my bed earlier and i'm on the water by seven o'clock or seven thirty, and and i don't feel like i have to push myself to do that mm -hmm. it, it's just I just want to be on the water by seven o'clock because it's it's a per, it's a beautiful part of the, of the day. Just just you know after the sun has risen and um, and then I, you know that it gives me time to paddle all day and do about twenty miles, twenty five miles if I want to. Not much further than I was doing in winter. And then coming off the water around about three o'clock in the afternoon or four o'clock. And then having that whole evening, and so that, so the delicious part of the day for me now is the, is the evening time. Mm -hmm. and so kind of just hanging around the camp, yeah. looking at the view, maybe exploring my surroundings. So in the winter, the delicious part was going to bed and snuggling, snuggling up and in. snoozing. And now it's it's being active and cooking outside the tent. No, you know, and and um, yeah, and just being active really, and and knowing that. That's what the you know the summer is going to be like until the end of the journey. You know that I'll be. You know that's going to be the pattern. So, uh, it's been very interesting. Um, yeah, and, and the other thing that I've noticed is that I've. Um, I. I haven't looked at my tide times at all. Really. I've, I looked at them twice. I think once when I went through the Cairo Narrows. Yeah. And. Fair um, I think I may have looked at them when I went round uh, uh, a nice point on on Sky because the tides run around there. I've just I've just adopted the rhythm of the sea as well, 
and and if the tide's against me, I'll just paddle slower. If the tide's with me, I'll paddle faster. Oh. And if it's the only time I, I'm and I'm aware of when high tide is and when it's likely to be again the next day because it always shifts, of course. Mm. And I'm aware and I'm aware when low tide is and I'm aware if it springs or neaps. But I don't know exactly when springs are. I don't know exactly when the high tide is or when the low tide is. I don't know exactly oh. to the time. But I know. But I I know enough to judge my day to arrive somewhere uh, so that it's you know it's comfortable to land or mm. uh, choose a campsite knowing that the next morning it will be high water rather than low water. And if it's going to be low water when I leave, then I choose a campsite where I don't have a huge stretch of mud flats to walk out over to, to launch. Yeah. And that's all happened naturally and I don't, you know, it's, it's the antithesis of, of, of what I've learned as a sea kayaker that you need, you need to be really prepared and yeah. do all your tide calculations every night. And, yeah. and uh, I, you know, I have an almanac and I've not used it once. Wow. And... Um, so even around places like Old Man of, St- of Stowe? Yeah, I just... I, the thing is, I, I've... I've I've become so attuned to the rhythm of, yeah. the, of the ocean that... Well, you said to me earlier, we were paddling, you're like, oh, the tide's turned, and I hadn't noticed anything. Yeah. And you said, I can feel it on my kayak. Yeah. And that's because you can just feel the difference yeah, in I can in feel the water on, yeah. the, on the kayak. And I can, I can tell by the, the surface of the sea or, you know, um, the, you know there's, there's, there's subtle signs that um, give me the indication yeah. of what the tide's doing. Um, yeah. yeah, and, and yeah. So, in a way, it's, that's really been very freeing. You know, yeah. I've kind of not seen sea kayaking as as it, it's just a it's just a way of journeying. Really, mm. it's not a it's not a um, a hazardous pastime, or it's not a technical pastime. Um, I mean, I think I'm I'm experienced enough to be able to to journey like yeah, that and to keep yourself safe yeah yeah, yeah exactly. but it, what it does offer is, is the opportunity to to be freer with my explorations yeah. I, you know I can, I can take myself into areas that I probably wouldn't have done five years ago or yeah yeah, yeah. Well, I think that is a good time to wrap this up because we're about to get drenched. <laughs> Talking of working with the rhythm of the nature, thank goodness nature has provided us with tents. <laughs> Thanks, Nick.
lights dropped out. Yeah, it's obviously in a storm or something with the rope snapped off the creel and it's just washed up. Like this isn't it's not intentional but it's still it's not okay. So um, yeah. Long way to go I think to solving this. But at least we can get this out of the water. So every every beach, did you see the fish farm stuff as well? Yeah, every beach. Every beach. Like every beach we've we've paddled past, so every little kind of Anything that looks like a beach, just broke everywhere. Dearie me! Right, come on, let's get ready. I wonder if I could use it as an exercise ball. Take care then. So yeah. Fun. yeah. So, so well and strong. Thank you. Have you lost weight? <laughs> Have you lost weight? Yeah, yeah, gosh, yeah. Hope you get back all right. And, thank you, um, thank you so much. This has been so good. Good luck with everything at Olapool. Yeah, thank you. We'll see you soon. Yes. Have fun. Safe bad Yeah. Keep, keep us posted on the cake. Yeah, we'll do. <laughs> see you later. Oh, so nice. It's so nice paddling with Nick because with what he's doing with this trip, just t taking his time, going into other lochs. It's like paddling, the reason for paddling is to actually enjoy it and to take your time and to explore the coastline. Whereas a lot of the paddles that we've done has been, we have to get from A to B and it's like a vehicle to get around a place. Yeah, you're on a, you're on a mission. Yeah, it's a completely different mindset. And, and like you're crossing big bays, so it's just like, a, it gets to be a bit of a slog after a while because there's no, point of reference that you don't know how fast you're moving and it's just a, a real kind of mindset endurance type thing whereas this is so it's been so lovely and there's great things about the kind of really pushing as, as well that I really enjoy but this has been a very different experience and I've really enjoyed it really loved it right yeah. I have to run and get the car now oh yeah Go so ahead. James now <laughs> an eight mile road run <laughs> so we, yeah we've paddled in one direction and I'm gonna sit sit here with all our stuff while James runs back runs back to the car runs back to the van and picks that up. And you're going to sunbathe. I'm not. Look at the colour of me. I'm not got. I need to get some sun cream. You get yourself in a cave. Some sun cream in your. You've been out your of your cave too long. Put some sun cream on, and then I think I'm going to write my diary and yeah. read a book. You're going to have a sleep. That's what you're going to do. Oh, I'm almost certainly going to have a sleep. Right. Let's get this stuff up. Let's go.